Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we have another series for you in preparing for your future. And anytime we're talking about the future, we're going to be talking about college applications. We're going to be talking about scholarships. We're also going to be talking about job applications because all the education in the world is great, but the goal is to get that employment. With that in mind, we have a special guest with us. From Richland Community College, I have John Oliver. John, tell us a little bit about your position at Richland and how you come to talk to us about resumes. Yeah, well, current position, I'm the Dean of Workforce Development, Matt. Um, been at the college for going on 11 years now and handful of various roles. I mean, this, and they've all built on themselves, uh, but the uh, probably today for being here to talk about resume writing and getting jobs, uh, the, the, the position I previously held as our career services coordinator uh, really relates to that area. Now I provide more trainings uh, to provide individuals with skills to get jobs. Uh, but previously I, I reviewed resumes, helped students with our resumes for getting jobs, internships, all that good stuff. And, and you know, and even um, prior to that, before I came to Richland, I worked in HR uh, for a few years where I was recruiting college students to go work at ADM. And so that's all I did was review resumes and applications and interview individuals. So that's kind of, it's all built on itself. Well, and that's exactly who we need to be talking to because for some students, it's gonna be the first job and it's gonna be maybe a local retail place or a food service place. But for others, it may be an internship at an ADM or a Caterpillar, or it may be something that they have an internship with a college that they're applying to. In all of these cases, resume building skills are gonna be useful now and for the rest of their lives. So. Uh, give us the basics of what needs to be a good resume. Well, error, error free. I mean, that would be the, the easiest thing to say. Um, I, I remember when I built my first resume, I was in college, actually. So you're, they, you all have a, a great head start. Um, my first one I built when I was in college, probably my sophomore or junior year with a business, uh, our business communications instructor, and uh, the way she did it was uh, she showed us how to build one. We did it. And then she red inked it. I mean, because she tore it apart. Uh, but I've maintained that same format now for 25 years because it was, it's got me jobs. Hey, I'm here. So, uh, uh, it, it, but it, that's the biggest thing is error free uh, because the job I had there at the college, that, that I worked at that college afterwards after I graduated. And our search committee member, a lot of a lot of the search committees that we would have would have an English professor on the search. And so in that resume or in that job description, it says have strong written and, and oral communication skills. Well, if we got 80 resumes and we didn't want to read 80 as a search committee, we'd hand them over to Scott, who was our English professor that sat on our search committee, and he would go through and find mistakes and we'd narrow it down to eight that were mistake free, and then we only reviewed eight. So so error free. And then highlight those skills, get those skills to the top of the resume, you know, because your resume is going to grow with you. Um, I mean, you know, you may not today as juniors have a elaborate resume, uh, you know, you, you, uh, I, that's the reason I recommend you all getting involved in school uh, and outside in your community. Because, yeah, what are you going to, besides that you go to school, you might, if you're going for your first job, well, you don't have any work history. So now if you're able to show that you're in all these clubs, sports, uh, that you volunteer for the, you know, right now, uh, or for the holidays, you're volunteering for the Salvation Army, ringing bells. I mean, all that stuff uh, shows, um, one, that you're not just sitting at home playing video games. Um, I guess that works if you're applying for video designers and all that, or game designers. But, um, but and then also getting involved with those sports and taking on leadership roles. You don't have to be president. But secretary, you know, I think in high school, I was, I was secretary of our senior class. You know, at least it showed I did something more than just attend the meetings. Well, and what I like about what you're talking about here is, yes, obviously, we want a list of history of paying jobs because that implies something to an employer. But if we're going for our first job or if we're going for an internship, if we're going into a different field, which for young people, you're new to every field, but you can still get work experience that you were not paid for because you worked Salvation Army. You worked um, with the homeless shelter. You volunteered at this place. You volunteered at this place. And volunteering at church is great, but volunteering for 
full organizations that are in the community are going to speak to a broader audience. If you're in school and you're doing a lot in school, that's good. But if you can broaden it out to your larger community, those are the types of things that employers, scholarship committees, those types of things are looking for. 